hello it's me again i thought it's coming up to halloween i love halloween uh it's coming up to halloween and i have been trying so hard to get through to read some spookier books because like it's fun to be scared i don't know about you i, I find it fun you know that's why i watch horror films and then spend the rest of the night like oh, i can't go in there and I need someone to make sure the lights are on and stuff like that. So I've been trying to get her to read some some spooky books. She's been point blank like nut mum. And I managed to talk her into it. And we got dun 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 dun. Do you remember these? Oh my god, blast from the past, mate. Let me sorry, there's a shadow. There we go. Goosebumps. I used to read these when I was little. Uh it's never really little. Um littler. R. L. Stein. And he also wrote those other books. Point Horrors. Do you remember those? Oh, I loved a, loved a Point Horror. Um, I used to be part of the Point Horror book club. <laughs> I'm so cool. And um, once a month, they'd send me a little package. You, my mum paid a prescription. A little package would arrive and I'd open it up and it'd have a different uh, Point Horror. And then I'd read that. And then by the time I'd read that one, boom, the other came. And they were just awesome books so this is kind of the the baby book i think this is the baby step towards point horror this is for the smaller children types this one we picked i thought i'd ease her in slowly so i went for the one with the most terrifying cover called the scarecrows oh the scarecrow walks at midnight and it's now goosebumps is a frightful new film which is quite impressive but yeah scarecrow so this book right there's quite a few of them there's more than that. There's loads. Um, basically, Jody and her brother, who I can never remember the name of because he's annoying. Uh, Mark. Jody and Mark. Mark's, Mark's kind of my spirit animal because all he wants to do is play computer games and sleep. And I can't see what's wrong with that, really. And the whole way through, Jody's like, oh, Mark's such a pain. He's so lazy. All he does is moan. And then she spends the whole book, the whole book, moaning about everything mostly her brother and i'm kind of a bit like no wonder he doesn't want to hang out with you jody you're a bit of a you know drip to be honest um so then jody hello hi what are you doing stop trying to eat my necklace yeah oh right so um jody mark city kids they go to spend um once a year they go to spend summer on their grandma and grandfather's farm uh, he has a farm worker there called Stanley, who is lovely, but I think he's meant to be like a little bit dim, which I think's, you know, the way he, he acts in this is a bit thick, um, you know, in the nicest possible way. Some people are just not very bright, and he is one of those. And then he has a son called Sticks. I don't know why. <clears throat> Sorry. Two seconds. It looks like I'm being a grown up drinking tea. But I'm not. It's Coca-Cola. I like drinking my drinks out of cups. Because, you know when you've got a glass and you have to hold it, sometimes that little, you know. Whereas this, look. Look how snug that is. Why would I want any other kind of cup? This is a snug... Yeah, so. Sorry, I just, um... I got a little tickle in my throat at the moment. I'm not coming down with anything. I'm getting over a cold, but it's just this niggly little that's been hanging around. So anyway, we go to the farm, and on the farm suddenly there's like a ridiculous number of scarecrows in the field, loads, and there are Zelda. No, ah, oh, hound. Honestly, is that working? What? What do you want? I'm doing a book review. You're worse than true. Come here then. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So they go on the farm um, and it's all a bit weird. There's loads of scarecrows. Stanley's acting like a lunatic carrying this book around with him. Styx is just being a douche because Styx is a douche. I think that's the only reason for his character in this book is just to be an arsehole, basically. And then you've got um, Grandpa and Grandma. And they're acting really bizarre as well. They're all like very 
placid and not wanting. I'm not like they go used to go street fighting or anything. They're pretty placid anyway. They're old, but um, stop. But then um, yeah, basically they're acting really bizarre, only making the food Stanley likes. Um, and then Stanley starts talking on about this book where he can make the scarecrows like Jersey says, and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, Stanley, crazy bitch, you know, whatevs. Um, no, he can actually do that. And uh, he, yeah, these scarecrows are like trying to attack everyone. So like Jody and that are like in a barn and scarecrow. That's the best part of the book is when she's in the barn and you can hear the... Ugh, can you imagine? That'd be grand. Oh yeah, I found that really that bit really good. I love Dizzy's. Um so yeah, and basically he brings them all alive, the spell, and they manage to outsmart the scarecrows, put them all back to sleep. Hey presto, Bob's your uncle, day is saved. Quite a bit through it, you kind of think it sticks just being like a pain. Um but it's not. It is actually Stanley's doing this magic spell. I don't know where he found this book. I don't know what book it is. I don't know where we got it from Waterstones. But if you see it, oh, and then something else happens. Oh, but I can't remember what it was. Hang on, hang on, bear with, bear with, bear with. Let me speed read. Uh, um, uh, uh. <gasps> That's it. I remember, I remember. The, uh, Stanley's still reading the book. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure about you guys, but if someone was reading the book and brought a load of scarecrows to life that tried to kill you, why in the world would you then allow them to continue to have that book? I would have taken the book. I would have said, no, Stanley, you're clearly incapable of picking good books. Why don't you pick one of these books? These books are nice books or whatever else. And no bringing scarecrows to life. And actually, for that matter, no spells for you. You know, or you're grounded or something like that, you know. And instead, they leave them with the book and the next thing... One of the, um, you know how people in America, they, they kill animals and then stuff them for reasons unknown to me. They just, they, they kill animals, they stuff them. I think it's like a hunting trophy or something. And then they put them in the houses. <clears throat> they start to, the bear comes alive. This big, I'm sure it didn't look like that. Ah, yeah, that's it. Just comes alive. See, even my, even my beagle is convinced but I was a bear then. Weren't you? No? Maybe not then. Goosebumps. We've got a load more, so we're going to give them all a go. Um, I think we're reading at the moment the one, the blob that ate everyone, and that one's actually quite good at the moment. I think I prefer it to the scarecrow one. But this was a good one to ease in on. And I had to keep, every time I read a chapter, I'd have to then continue to read and go, oh, no, it was just a friend. Because otherwise, like, true would just be like, I can't sleep and awake or whatever. So I, I had to lie quite a lot. But yeah, good book. Um, I bought it in a bulk. It's 5 99 but I bought a, a box set from The Works. It does loads of art stuff as well. And there were like, I think it was about eight or nine in a pack for like 10 quid, which was really, really good price. So that's what we did. Sorry, Waterstones. But that's what we did. Anyway, right. I'll leave you to it. Have a good day. Um, read it though. If you want to scare some children that are of a younger age, go for it. Uh, teenagers or preteens, preteens, tweenies, whatever. Um, point horrors, really, really good. We're gonna say goodbye, Zelda. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.